Hey everyone, this is Nikun Shah again from HP Aruba Networking's WLAN DME team and this is going to be the third video in the series, Simple and Secure Networking. In the first two videos, we saw how to bring up your branch firewalls and how clustering works. Now in this video, we will see how to protect your branch with some basic policies that should be set for every branch by default and also see how IDS IPS engine works. We'll start off by creating an alias for a branch DNS server, which will be later used in one of the policies. Navigating to policies and applications and network aliases, let's add a new alias and call it branch DNS and then add a user rule by specifying the DNS. In my case, it's Cloudflare DNS, so it's just using 1.1.1.1. It could be anything in your case. Next, we'll create a new role called branch user, which will be assigned to all the users connecting on VLAN 200. After this, we need to assign some policies for this newly created role. This could be under security and selecting my newly created role. Now, we see there are two policies that are already present by default. Let's edit the global SACL policy and this will be applied to all the roles that are present on my gateways some very generic rules that should always be denied at any corporate office should be added here. We'll start off by creating a WebCC rule to deny botnets like this. Similarly, I'll add a few more in the similar fashion and eventually the list will look like this. After this, let's add a new policy that will allow basic network services. I'll click add next to the policies here and create a network services policy. Under rules for this policy, I will add access to DHCP service. Second rule to add here is to allow DNS service to the branch DNS alias that we just created in the previous step. So for destination, I'll select network alias and destination alias as newly created branch DNS alias. Now, apart from these, I will add a few more policies that will protect my branch against rogue and unsolicited DHCP and DNS servers. You can pause the video here and take a look at all the policies and add them in your setup. Next policy to be created will allow traffic to the internet or web in general. We'll call it web traffic and add a rule by selecting the service as WebCC and permit. This alias will cover all HTTP and HTTPS traffic by default. Now, by default, it is an implicit deny all at the end if nothing is mentioned. However, some network admins may choose to add a separate policy for their sake. That sets all the policies for the users that will be connecting at a branch. Next, we need to assign this role to the user VLAN for which we'll navigate back to roles and add a new role assignment for user VLAN 200 and the initial role as branch user. Now, any user connecting on wired or wireless interfaces with VLAN 200 will go through all the policies that we just set for this role. Next, Let's look at the gateway IDS IPS feature and how it can help us add another layer of protection at a branch. One thing to note here is that this IDPS feature works on the best in class 9000 series gateways and the newer 9100 and 9200 series gateways. Under security tab, we have gateway IDS IPS knob. We'll go in config mode and first off, enable traffic inspection. For inspection mode, we could have IDS, which will only detect threats, or we can select IPS, which can help us protect from the threats as well. We can also check automatically update rule set, which ensures that my branch is always up to date with the new threat definitions that Aruba classifies. Next, under policies, we can select lenient, moderate, or strict as per our choice. Each of these contain more and stricter blocking signatures in that order. Let's enable moderate for now. 
we can check what kind of signatures and rules are present in this policy type. As we can see this has close to 18,000 signatures and we are constantly updating these rule sets to ensure they stay current. Gateways receive daily signature updates. Threads like WannaCry or Log4j for example can be found in this list as seen here. Selective inspection is introduced to handle any exceptions for the inspection based on your business requirement. The treatment type can be to either assign an inspection policy or bypass the inspection for a client role or roles under risky and safe respectively. Now, under client roles, you can explicitly mention which client roles should undergo inspection, thereby putting them under risky and which should bypass inspection by putting them under safe. And similarly, the same goes for network aliases too. So now, if we were to look at a sample threat list detected by Aruba IDPS engine, we can look at this another demo setup where all this traffic is blocked. More info about a particular threat can be viewed by clicking the view packet info. This gives me more detail about that particular threat and we can also download a pcap file from here for further inspection. Finally, we can take a look at this summary page which gives me a nice graphical view of all the threads that have been detected by my firewalls. So, the type of threads along with when they were detected, overall trend can be seen here along with the most affected clients. Also, a list of top hosts and finally, a geographical view of the world with the number of threads detected can also be seen here. So that brings us to the end of this video where we saw how easy it is to protect our branch with roles and policies and how a powerful IDS IPS engine can be used to detect and prevent our enterprises from thousands of threats. See you in the next one. Goodbye.